Hello and welcome back to the fish locker out on the pier. We're out shore fishing again tonight and we're out on a local pier to me. We have uh, three more hours of the flood so we're halfway into the flood. I got down here about three quarters of an hour ago. I've just got my two rods set up here. I will uh, I will walk you through what I'm doing here in a moment but um, what we're going to be doing is we're fishing into an area of very rough ground. The pier as it comes out has got rocks all around and then at distance it's got clean sand. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to fish down along the sides of the pier and out onto the sand with scratching rigs to try and find small live baits. And then I'm going to fish live baits and big baits for things like huss and conger inside all the real rough stuff. On this rod here I have a two hook flapper rig, I have a really simple two hook scratching rig and that's cast out to about 100, 120 yards onto the sand and it's using small like size 4 hooks and bits of squid and bits of mackerel. On this rod here I have a simple running ledger with a conger bait on. I'll show you that now. Very simply all it is is it's just a zip slider on my main line with a lead on about a foot and a half of a hundred pound mono ending in an 80 meat hook with a big bait on now that is a pilchard that's literally as simple as it is it needs to just be strong and simple so short hook length because we're right inside the rough stuff strong mono because it's got strong teeth and a big strong hook and a big smelly bait and that's all you need any of you that watch my videos will know that I like to get set up before I start doing anything else. Got one rod set up, perfect. <laughs> Getting the second rod set up, bang, bang, bang. We have already caught the target species, both of in fact. I've got a little tiny scratching rig down the side, I've caught a rockling, and on my conga bait, I've caught a conga. I'll show you those now. There you can see, we have a nice big conga and on my scratching rig I have a shore rockling. Now this is simply what this rig is. It is a two hook scratching rig. That's a little bit of mackerel and this was a little bit of squid. And that, not to be confused with a three bearded rockling because even though it has got three beards, you can see those like, where are they? If you can see the little whiskers, like the one underneath its chin, and the two on the top. This has got three beards, but this is a shore rockling. If I catch a three bearded rockling, you'll see the difference. And that, you can't mistake that, that's conger. I'll get that out in a second and show you. But this guy, not an ideal live bait, but I'll keep him just in case. I'll keep him alive in this bucket. This is why, bringing a bucket like this, I always bring one of these and keep things alive in there to show for the camera and keep things recovered keep things ready for unhooking and it doesn't take now I mean I've, I've carried this 100 yards from the van the baits all I've got is I've got some some frozen bits left over those are little poor cod that I've caught on the boat and a couple of mackerel left over from another session and some frozen squid all I've been doing is I've just been making up a couple of hook lengths just leaving them at the side so that as soon as I bring one in I can clip another one on cast straight out. When you're fishing on a pier like this one of the things that I've always kind of thought is you're already out there you don't need to cast you don't need to go to the end of a hundred yard pier and then cast another hundred yards because the fish might only be 50 yards so you can you can drop straight down and you're already in good water also if you've got a pier that sticks out any fish that are transiting along the coast they hit the pier and they've got to go around it so by dropping a bait just down by the sides you're just as likely to catch a fish in fact I've had some fantastic fish right down alongside the pier one of the ways that I'd, I kind of help my chances so to speak is things like this this little poor cod I've caught this on the boat I, I can't remember when but when I catch them on the boat and they die and I can't use them for bait there and then put them in a ziploc bag and I stick them in the freezer for times like this and all I do is I just bring them out like now and I chop them up into little tiny pieces like pieces that big 
and then every five minutes you chuck them down. You're just ground baiting. You're ground baiting just like you do when you're course fishing. Every two or three minutes, chuck another piece in. Chuck another piece in. All to the same place. And what you'll find is the first few pieces will be eaten by like crabs and gobies and little tiny things. But as they chew them up, it creates scent. And then a bigger fish will move in. And as you keep chucking more in, that'll feed. And then a bigger fish will move in. Until you get to a point where you've, you might end up with a decent hus, a decent bass, or a decent conger right at your feet. I mean, this, this here, what I mean, is a stone pier. It, it's not, there will be cracks and there will be holes in it which conger live in, but fish will hit it and move round it as they patrol. If you've got a pair that's just stanchions, there might be fish already living underneath it. This has accounted for some amazing fish for me. I've, I've done it quite a few times before where usually the bite is pretty quick. If you pre-bait like I have done now for about half an hour, and then at some one point you put your bait straight down, you'll get a bite pretty quick because the fish have already come in on the scent, they've already come in on the feed. As soon as you drop a bait down there, usually they've been competing, you will get a bite quite quick. And that's, yeah, that's, that's accounted for some fantastic fish for me. Right, look. Just make a little pile up, and every couple of three minutes, just chuck a couple of cubes in like this. Right, we'll take a quick look at this conger here. People often get worried about holding congers. And all you need to do is, if you can see there, where I've got my fingers, they might writhe around a bit, like this one is. But if you can, there look, see? And it doesn't touch the gills. No matter what anybody tells you, sliding your hand up the inside of the gill cover doesn't come in contact with the gills so you're not hurting it at all. Just slide your hand up, there look, and it can wriggle around as much as it wants, but it can't go anywhere. They are... <laughs> Some people think they look fantastic, I think they look awesome. Other people are scared to death of them. But these, these reef, these rough ground congers are really dark, aren't they? Look at his mouth. I don't know if you can see right on the end of his nose, he's got two little tubes. They do hunt by scent, well, especially on a night, even though they've got these big predator eyes. And if you can see down here on this lateral line, they hunt by feel. Now this one has actually it's got a wound on top of it on here. So bigger congas probably had older this one. But you can see there why they fight so well as well, can't you? It's literally, it's all fin, it's all flap. Could swim backwards. I'm not going to try and show you the teeth, if you can't see them there. They're little, like tiny, tiny ones, just like really, really rough sandpaper. But what they do is they grate and they grind. What we'll do is, I'll drop him back down in here, because we are getting a little bit of a knocking bite. And keep hearing the rod rattling. In a minute, we'll take him and we'll let him go. Now, you just slide your hand up underneath. Oh, I've got a wet hand. There it goes. Slinked back into the darkness. Ah, oh, my wrist's soaking. I'm going to show you how I bait up. Now, baiting up with a Joey mackerel like this is always a bit of a, a toss-up as to which way you do it, depending on who you speak to. Because um, predator fish, like conger and like hus, generally will take a bait head first. They will manoeuvre it round in their mouth and swallow it, like pike do, they will swallow it head first. So it would make sense to have the hook with the barb towards the head like that. So once they swallow it, you can set the hook into it. But 
The head is the hardest part. So often I like to put the hook through that way. And whenever I'm shark fishing or whatever I'm fishing for conger off the boat, I'll always hook it by the head. So depending who you speak to and depending what your own preference is, is either hooking it through the body so the hook's like that, or hooking it through the head so the hook's like that. I'll show you both ways. Right, I'm gonna show you with a mackerel and a pilchard. First one I'm gonna show you with is I'll show you with the pilchard. Right, I always take the tail off simply because when they've got a fin they can spin in the tide so I'll take it and I'll either go through through the eye or through the mouth just a hard part of the head and if you can bend the fish down like that so you're bending the fish around the hook you can pop the hook out once you've got it out the side of the body like that take your bait elastic and all you're doing is you're putting elastic either side of the hook and then up around the eye and all you're doing is you're holding you're holding the knot and the eye of the hook to the fish there so all you're going to do there is I like muppets in my rigs I use them in an awful lot of my rigs. Not only does it add abrasion resistance, but if it's glow in the dark, I'm not going to be able to show you because I've got a light on, it adds abrasion resistance and attraction. There, that bait is going to sit and you've got a hook point proud like that. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, the opposite way around, still again, take the, take the end of the tail off and you're just going to do the same but feed it the opposite way around so you're just going to take it and you're just going to feed it up the tail like that if you can bend the fish up the hook bring it out like that and again just take some bait elastic and give it when you can get hold of the bait elastic with your cold fingers There you are. There are a pilchard and a mackerel hooked both ways. The fundamentals are is the hook needs to be through the bait and the hook point and the hook barb need to be proud. So you can see there, no matter which way it is, they're both well into the baits, well lashed on, presents a good bait and the hook point is well proud. If the hook point isn't sticking out, doesn't matter if the fish gets it in its mouth you're not going to hook up because the hook points what catches you the fish you see it down there on the surface you have to walk it Walk it down the pier and try and land it up the steps. Another nice eel. There you go. That is a nice sized eel, but caught on the scratching rig. The rig that I was supposed to be using. Sorry. That is a nice sized eel caught on the rig that was supposed to be catching me the live baits has found me another nice conger eel now smaller smaller in length than the last one but I would say that this one's a stockier fish got a big fat head on it hasn't it ah oh, that was lucky you see there look where the hook's caught right in the corner of the mouth there's only a hook that was this big look hooked it right in the corner of the mouth Calm down. Yeah. 
Hey, look. Someone's been having a go at that. I think it was probably just a little eel. Cheeky mare. Let's give another bait out. Right, this is all the rig is. It is. It is a running ledger. Now look, so the lead's free sliding. I have probably a foot of 100 pound mono and one of the baits I've just made up. Now you might notice that I am using a grip lead. Now this is quite a controversial subject when you're fishing really rough ground. I think that using a grip lead like this, although these are meant for sand, if there's going to be a crevice anywhere, this is going to stick in it with these spikes. Whereas a normal round lead would stick straight in it. So I think that these spikes would stick in the rock and hold it there and as soon as you come to pull it breaks out and makes it smaller so it leaves. I've found that since I started fishing grip leads in rough ground like this I've lost less leads. Which is contrary to what you would expect wouldn't it? But proof's in the pudding. That's the rig. Right let's have a look at that conga then. This one is this one is the heavier fish. See what I mean about how when you pick it up there, it doesn't matter how much it rides. When you hold it there, it doesn't matter how much it rides. You've got a good safe hold. You're not going to drop it and hurt the fish. It's not going to bite you. You've got a good safe hold of it. Now it is, like I say, this is a stockier fish. The last one was a little bit longer, but this one is just thick all the way to the end. the cracking conga now I've um, I've potentially ruined my chances now because one of the things that I was going to mention about it is um, when you're fishing for conga keep your light away from the water for some reason it just puts them off completely when I was landing that one because I thought I might lose it on the side because it was on the scratching rig I showed you with the light the fish in the water I shone my headlamp directly onto the water. That might have completely ruined my chances. But as we're coming up to daylight as well, yeah, I think we're coming up to the end of the session. Fishing on a shallow, well, even though we're fishing into about, let me think, seven or eight meters of water here. No, actually, probably more like 10 meters of water here now because we're coming up to high tide. It's still considered as being a shallow rock mark. Fishing a shallow rock mark with clear water like this in daylight is not very good for congas. It's just a fact. If you're going to be fishing rough ground from the shore for congas, you want to really be doing it on a night. Unless the, unless the water's really colour, like the Bristol Channel. I'll quickly talk to you about unhooking congas. Now, usually when you're catching them on a hook like that, they are much easier to unhook. What I have done is I've made myself like a homemade tea bar. All it is is I've bent a tight loop into a piece of metal and then turned the end over so I can lock it up onto my hand so I can pull the hooks out. What you do is when there's a hook stuck into a conga like that, you put that down, you put this hook, this hand hook, around to the bend of the hook, turn it and then use the conga's own weight to pull the hook out. Of course the hook that that one was on was like a size 4, I couldn't really show you. That fish came on the exact spot where I've been ground baiting all night. Just goes to show, that's my bonus fish from ground baiting that area. If I hadn't have been doing that, I'm positive I wouldn't have caught that fish. We will... Um, Give it about another half an hour until the sun properly comes up and we'll start packing up and we'll go. Let's go and let this fish go. There we go. Hey, look, 
in along the wall and then down the side. Oh, little Mr. Rocklin. I'd forgotten he was even in there. Calm down. God, that water's cold. Check him down as well. Oh, tripped it by a wave. There he goes. Right, we're going to wrap it up now and call it a day. We've uh, we've fished it all the way up and it's just starting to web off now. The tides come all the way up to the top and it's going to start going off. And like I say, fishing in daylight, in clear water for congas, it's not the best. I've had a really good session considering I've um, all of my fish have come within 15 feet of the pier. So if that teaches you anything, it's absolutely do not, <laughs> do not forget what's at your feet. Don't overlook what's right at your feet. Uh, three congas, one rockling. I, I did catch one like. A, two, two and a half pound conger that spat the bait on the surface. It, all it was was it had a decent sized joey and it had half of it in its mouth. Its mouth wasn't big enough to fit it all in so it didn't get the hook. Um, two of the nice sized eels. They weren't massive by conger standards but they're good sized eels to catch from the shore. Um, I did have a scratching bait, I did have a scratching rig, a two hook scratching rig out at distance. Not a dogfish, not a pouting, not a whiting, not nothing. It almost seems like doesn't feel like a proper shore session without dogfish, does it? Anyway, I hope you keep an eye on them behind me so I don't have to keep turning around. I hope you've enjoyed and found useful the hints and tips that I've given in the video of how our fish by pier. Um, definitely, one of those little tips is that bit of ground baiting. That last fish, that biggest, that biggest eel, came because of that. Where I'd been chucking all them little tiny scraps offerings, all the like little squid guts and the, the poor cod that I chopped up, that was, I dropped a big bait in there and within two minutes, bang, it was on. That was it. That was that fish. Um, yeah, so you can have that one for free. Uh, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed joining me. I hope this has been useful for you. Let me know. I'm hoping to do more of this type of shore fishing video, uh, covering everything from the basics of entry level into fishing from a beach, fishing from a pier, all the way up to, hopefully, some hints and tips for the guys that have already been around for a while. If I catch another fish in the next 10 minutes that it takes me to pack up, I will show you. If I don't, then I won't. In the meantime, all the very best. Take it easy. We'll see you later.